Hello, hello, hello. I need to turn on. There we are. Oh, I forgot to move the link back somewhere. Mm. Give me a second while I resize. Oh, this is so much fun. I completely, I checked everything else. I was much more focused on getting all the video good because I was looking back at some of my old videos from the last couple weeks and I was like, hmm, the video looked good while I was doing it, but that's really blue in hindsight. So if things look really blue or everything to you, like on here, let me know because I can adjust that in real time. I know my face looks very yellow. What ended up happening was that I needed to, um, the webcam has like weird white balance settings. So in order to like balance it out here to make it not blue, I needed to turn up the yellow component of my LED light, which is why I have that. <laughs> so yeah. Um, we're gonna continue with Diamond and Shimmer Tastics today, as like I said, we're gonna be doing all month. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, we're doing, so we're gonna be doing, um, we're now in the first generation Diamond and Shimmer Tastics. I got them, when they first came out, I got a sample pack. I did not try all of them. <laughs> And so yeah, we're getting to like OG Shimmer Tastics like first run. But yeah, so how are you guys doing this fine Thursday? I've had, it's been a Thursday. There's been a lot of things going on today. Not really a lot of things, but fires I've had to burn, put out that were a little crazy. Normally I try and keep my Thursday chill. Thursdays and Fridays I try and keep chill because I work weekends. That was not the case today. Mm. You know what I'm not going to? Because usually the people on Twitch that want me, that want people to say their names are trying to trick people into saying really shitty things. But hey, I'm just gonna say arms. <laughs> I've just had, yeah, it's just been one of those days. Where is... Okay, cap. I'm actually really excited for Brandy Dazzle because this was looked to be my favorite of the original Shimmer Tastics lineup. But then I never got around to it. I have this weird thing where, I'll sit, where I will save my favorites for last and then never get around to them. I'm getting better about it, but yeah, it was definitely the case here. Actually, let me do that again for the ASMR. Oh, I left like nothing in here for the other pen. Goulet samples, man. They are just not the most full. It's the only samples I ever have problems like where I have to really like watch it to fill my pens or goulet samples. There we are. 
I don't think I even use this one either. Sometimes it's just like, oh, you have a light sample today. Sure, like like I think I've said multiple times, Goulet samples are fine if you want to fill Lytrata in one pen. If you want to fill multiple pens at once, or even try the ink in multiple different pens, because you do lose ink to the feed, like and everything so it's not like it all goes back in the vial you can try it this is enough to try the two mils is enough to try it in one pen and one pen only <laughs> so you got to pick it wisely have a standard tester pen for that and you can even but yeah so let's look and see what brandy dazzle looks like in the swab here it is right here it's a really nice um golden like rust color that has gold shimmer. I really like this. It looks spectacular. It's right in here with the family of Sailor, Mar Sailor Mars and Athena Ranga and Noodlers and Tetum. It's a little like ancient copper is a little darker. So the camera here, at least what I'm seeing on my screen is bringing out more of the red in here, but it's m a little bit more brown. So cool. So let's get out all our equipment, our hippo noto and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, just need, like I said, fires all day. So I'm gonna be like in and out clicking things because it's just, is one of those days. Okay. And let me make sure. Cool. I just wanted to make sure everything was up and running in the back. Okay, we're gonna go now and do some ink reviewing. Need my pencil. I'm actually gonna sharpen it. Look at that lovely classroom friendly sharpener. Yeah, we're definitely getting there on this pencil. It's been over a year. I basically only used this pencil exclusively to write these titles, essentially. It's fun. It's kind of fun just seeing how pencil goes down, just doing the one task. So I don't see how this works. I'm really hoping that this one turns out. Like I said, I have high hopes for this one. I'm basically really hoping that it doesn't clog this pen. This pen in particular, the Parker 45. Because as you've seen for the last couple weeks, it just sometimes really doesn't get along with sparkle inks. And even though I've been inking it during the week, with a really nice ink. I've been inking it up with Waterman Tender Purple to flush out the sparkle during the week and it really needs that, otherwise it doesn't work too well. I did fix my pilot. Here it is, it's all it's all fixed. Um, I actually was able to fix it that same night, but yeah, it was, it, what the issue was there was a bunch of like just crud and debris up in here and that made it not screw down when I depressed the piston and so this piss these threads gave up the ghost instead so I basically once it was all disassembled because it was a part anyway I scrubbed everything down and then reassembled it I actually 
what I was having trouble with is I didn't have a proper wrench to screw it. But then I remembered I did have a Twisby a couple years ago. I still have the packaging for it, still have the Twisby wrench that did the trick to tighten it all up. And now it's much better. So yes, I'm very glad I did not have to send that off to Pilot USA or something. Because they would have fixed it, but it probably would have cost money and it would have taken a long time. And this is one of my favorite pens. <laughs> Don't like being without it. Okay. And so now we're going to go to the part where I'm going to be intermittently looking at the screen while I copy things down. Because that's part of what this is, is me copying things. I'm like actually writing the reviews. And again, praying. Meant that this particular pen does not clog because it's just has more sparkle than it likes. The article I'm copying today is about a very big boat that capsized on the coast and is causing issues. I could have done one about budget cuts, but I did one of those like a week or two ago and I skimmed the article and it didn't look like there was anything new. Aside from some more specifics about what agencies are going to have to cut what. But this looked more interesting because it's a big boat that turned over. So they're still weird. There we are. Okay, we're back. Cool. At least it says we're back. So but anyway, yeah, that custom Heritage 92 last week, just what happened, not custom, the 92. There's too many numbers floating around in these pen names. Um, but with this Parker 45, I don't know if you saw last week, it basically clogged in the first couple lines with Diamond Magical Forest. It was very sad. Which is just like, okay, some of the diamine inks are spottier than others. And honestly, I don't know if it's, it would, if current bottles would still do that. Because like I said, this is like first gen. Hey, yeah, sometimes my internet be dumb. And like, it's, it's my internet. It's like, there's nothing else I can really do about it. The good thing is Twitch instituted that like, oh, we're, we're gonna give you a buffer. So your stream doesn't just end when you disconnect. Like, cause that was what had happened. Like last summer, I just had like four or five part streams because it disconnected in the middle. So it's like, okay, because it's just temporary blip in my internet.
Because I live in a major city. I should have good internet. Not. But yeah, back to Diamine Magical Forest. I'm pretty sure... Well, I'm not pretty sure. So, because like I said, these, I got them, these samples. What am I doing? Mirror measure. I got the samples when these inks first dropped. So, it's the first batch of Diamine's first run of sparkle inks and as we saw with Girbon like in 2010 or so sometimes when you do this for the first time you have kinks to work out so maybe it's better now oh wait forgot to do the ASMR like maybe they figured out like okay we figured out how to make it not clog like that's the thing with shimmer inks like there's a definite like R&D bump especially since like these diamine ones were the first shimmer inks other than Girbon to come out. So, I don't know. I'm not too eager to like, I don't, I'm not that invested to get another more recent sample and try it out. Really not, not that invested. Oh boy, there's gonna just be that overturned boat on the Savannah River for months. That's awesome. One thing I'm happy to see is that this ink is just as pretty as I expected it to be from, like, swatches. I'm kind of kicking myself. For saving it for last and then never getting to it. Like, I think I bought... When did the Diamond Shimmer Tastic inks come out? Like, the first ones? Because that's when I bought these been sitting on them for literal years. Who is texting me? Yeah, this is rather pretty. It actually reminds me a lot of Diamine Ancient Copper, just with gold shimmer. Even though, like I said, we looked through this and it was like, okay, yeah, it's Diamine Ancient Copper is a little bit more red and darker. Diamine has so many inks, it's probably really close to another one of their inks. But also knowing Diamine, they probably actually legit formulated a new ink for this. 
I was like, I don't know if you guys have seen the like ink vent calendar. They're like, we're just going to make 25 new inks exclusively for that. I have no idea. I have actually not, my bottle of ancient copper has not given me nib crud issues. Actually, the only ink I've ever had nib, uh, like nib crud issues in, and this include like I own Dye Me Pumpkin, I own Ancient Copper, like I own a lot of like the like bad suspects that like that normally do nib crud. Um, is Dye Me Sunset, and Dye Me Sunset then like a year or two late or so later like funked on me, like got moldy, so I'm like maybe it crudded. And like, I hadn't seen reports of Diamond Sunset doing that, but it was, it's still like a bright orange. But it also funked in a pen, not in the bottle. Like I un, like I uncapped, this was, it was a vintage Esther book that I bought at like my first pen show and I cleaned it out and everything, but like vintage, like there might be stuff living in there. Like that's, it happens and so like I uncapped the pen like I uncapped just like just capped normally and I immediately smelled like a musty smell and I was like what the hell and then I sniffed the nib and it was that and I was like oh shit and it had di I had diamine sunset in it and so I immediately quarantined the diamine sunset because I'm like it's been exposed and I actually was able to like I, I'm used to sterilizing things this is like I sterilized the pen it was fine like there wasn't anything growing or anything. And cause it was an Estabrook, I could just unscrew the nib and like really like flush that all out and like scrub the nib down. It was, if it had to happen to a vintage pen, an Estabrook was a good pen for it to happen to because those are very easy to disassemble and really scrub down and like everything. So that was fine. But like, I like I still actually have the bottle of Diamond Sunset cause I want to dispose of it properly. Behold, it funked my in my pen. But it's just been over to the side. If I hold it up to the light, there's like floaters in it. There's not like a mat of mold, but I don't want to open it because again, I know about sterile technique and stuff. And I'm like, that could spread spores. <laughs> so it's just been sort of sitting there and I was going to bring it in for the proper bio side disposal when I worked in the lab and I never did. And now I haven't worked in the lab for like two years. So it's just sitting there. <laughs> I don't know. It'll probably just sit there until I move and then I'll like just toss it <laughs> or like make sure everything else is packed away and then properly dispose of it down a sink. But yeah, that one, when it crudded, it crudded on my Lamy Vista and it was during class and I was writing with it and it like visibly grew a bunch of crud over the course like of the class <laughs> i mean okay in your case with the bottle of california teal like if the people who work at Monte Verde know anything about like how biology works. The fact that you had one go bad means that you have contaminants in the like area and that's how like moles reproduce is via spores. So that automatically increases the likelihood that any other inks that don't have proper biocides in them will funk. And because they had that issue, it is entirely, it actually makes it more likely that that specific Monte Verde would funk. Also from when like Private Reserve did have that that's issue right when their founder died where the bio side was off and there are mold issues. All my bottles of private reserve are from before or after that period. So I haven't had a bottle of private reserve like funk, but like the, any of those bottles from that period would also be susceptible. Like I said, anything that doesn't have proper bio sides are going to be more susceptible now because they've definitely been exposed. So the moral of that story being, I would not find it odd as the Monte Verde representative that the same person contacted me, contacted me again, it would actually be expected. Yeah, I understand why it's weird. Like why you think it's weird. Like I get that. And like, like the, Oh no, I've already asked them for help once. 
how could I ask them for like, they already did a thing for me. They've like, they've done it. Oh no, I'm coming back. I feel bad. I totally understand that. I have that thing. <laughs> Where even was I in the article? I was too busy talking about mold and inks. Massive salvage and... So, so far I have not, well, none of these pens that I have right now, I like are known to, at least to me, to be susceptible to nib crud. The one, like I use Diamine Sunset and other pens after it crudded in my Lamy Vista without any issue. Like it just needed a better seal or something. Like there was something about like the Lamy feed specifically. So I really don't know if it'll crud or not. Like I would have to put this in my Lamy to see if it crudded. But my Lamy, Lamy Vista also really doesn't like sparkle inks. So I wouldn't know if any behavior weirdness is due to crud or due to sparkle. Actually, that's a good question. Will this, would the sparkle particles actually impede crud growth? Like I wonder, cause that, I want to say that process is probably similar to just like, is it's a crystallization process. And so when you have some sort of seed crystal or something, it's gonna, it needs to be in contact with the original seed crystal or something in order to do that crystallization. The sparkles might disrupt that actual crystal formation matrix. I'm not sure. I did have actually crud on in this pen last week from the magical forest, but I wanted to say it was like, it, it looked like it, was, it wasn't the, the green part that was crudding, it was the actual like silver particles that were building up. So I don't know. <laughs> Time to run an experiment. Put some sparkle particles in there. Put it in a pen that's susceptible to sparkle. See what you get. Also, just do dye dye regular. And if you have two of the same pen, do them con like at the same time to get rid of time variables and like environmental variables. But if it's the one pen, you just do it once, then again, and do it a couple times because sample sizes. One of my students is doing stat, so I'm like, I normally am thinking about sample sizes and stuff. But like, because I'm basically doing a stats class, interest stats class with them, it's like extra thinking about sample sizes. There you go. Do it with a fleet of metros. Good sample size. If you want help with the statistics, I could help you run them. <laughs> you could publish a very unofficial paper on this, aka blog post. That's been a thing because I am formally trained as a scientist. I've kind of wanted to run like experiments on like pen stuff like, oh, hey, does parafilm actually help prevent leaks during shipping? Does bottle, like do, does vi do certain vial types leak more or less than others? Does it depend, like, does it depend on ink wetness? Like doing all these experiments and actually like writing, writing them up. But one, 
I know from experience that while I like running the experiments, I hate writing up the experiments, so I would never actually write those blog posts. <laughs> Do I all have time for that? There was another thing I wanted to do an experiment with that, that I remember thinking of the protocol for it and it would involve like partnering with the Franklin Kristoff table or something. I don't remember what at a pen show and like gathering like data from people at the nib testing area, but I don't remember what it was. So, so far this is writing real nice and I'm really enjoying it. And again, I'm kicking myself for not using this sample like a couple years ago when I first got it. What is with all these fires on ships? Like, cause there's that diving boat off of California, now this giant, like, tanker caught on fire and capsized. see if I can get the sparkle go in here because it's always hard to see that there we are you can kind of see the the shiny 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 shiny
I always tell if something is from the first run of Diamine Shimmertastic inks because they all have like these names with so many Z's in them, like Purple Pizzazz. I love Purple Pizzazz. It's the one of them that I have a full bottle of, but the name is like, really? <laughs> This one is Brandy Dazzle. Let's do all the Z's. And of course my favorites are the ones with the Z's. Such good snapping action on that pen. Though I have, if I uncap it too violently, it will, like, it's one where I have to, I'll show you how to, I learned to uncap it by, like, softly doing it, not by pulling, because I have to pull so hard it actually causes ink drops to launch out of the pen. Learned that the hard way. <laughs> Okay, it's not as bad as when I had, oh, what was it, my Aurora Ypsilon. I love that pen, but it decided to leak when I was in the middle of, like, the training for my current job, but it was, like, the assessment part of the training, because they don't actually offer a higher until you like pass the training you're like provisional at that point so it was while i was like doing the assessment part to see if i would actually like get the job get the job that i decided to leak with my one of my like not my boss but my like my boss's boss <laughs> was there and it was like oh thanks aurora <laughs> i love you pen but why why did you pick now <laughs> Okay, so now let's see how it looks on shitty paper. Some of these, these have been hit or miss for the shitty paper. Some of them it's done real well on. Some it's just been a wash. Some it's been real bad. So, yeah. Oh yeah, you can even see that here a little bit. And not so much in the video, but like, again, Diving Magical Forest was a really wet ink. Like it, there's like spots on this other side of the page. It was a little ridiculous. Yeah, overall this ink has been a very nice ink. Good flow, it's just behaved. Winner from Diamine. Very old winner from Diamine. But hey, it's a new to me ink. So close. 
It wasn't 420 vehicles, it was 4200 vehicles. <laughs> Make up blaze it, yep. <laughs> blaze it times ten to the first. <laughs> Scientific notation, blaze it. Or four point two oh times ten to the third, blaze it. <laughs> That's scary. Apparently, 20 people got off the boat safe, but four were on the boat and were trapped on the capsized boat. That sounds terrifying. That sounds like something out of Jaws. Oh good, they got all the people out. I think the difference between this boat and the diving boat is that all the members of this boat were crew members, so professionals, so they knew what to do and had that training and instinct versus on the diving boat, it was all civilians, except for the crew members. Like the crew members were the ones that were able to get out because they had the training versus all the divers were just like, nope. Okay. So let's see what it looks like on the back. I've seen better, especially in that wet. That's like pretty much, you can read that with the mirror. I'm not surprised though, because it did feel like, it didn't feel nearly as like extremely wet as Diamond Magical Forest, but it felt up there. So this is a wet ink. That's very pretty. Don't use it on shit paper. Especially in a wet pen. A 
like I keep saying, and this is one of the points of these reviews, is that people always say like, oh yeah, just throw it in a fine nib, your ink, and it'll be fine on shitty paper. Not always the case. It depends on the actual pen and the feed. Like I have this guy. That is an extra fine vintage Pilot Elite. Holy crap, it's wet. It obliterates shit paper real good. That's an extra fine Japanese pen. Nib size doesn't dictate everything. Okay. Okay, so unfortunately this article at the boat is not very long. I thought it would be longer. So we're going to do a different article when I get back from cleaning all these pens. Let's empty them first. But yeah, like I said, I'm glad all the crew members got out. And oh, apparently they were in remarkably good condition according to the Coast Guard. That's, that's good to hear. So the boat might have turned over, but everyone's alive. And the problem, the main problem is the boat is still there and it's going to take a long time to get the boat out of the river swamp thing. Yeah. Where was it? Let me look. It was, this is St. Simon's Island. So it's just off the Georgia coast. So it's like in like an area where there's a wildlife refuge, probably, or like close to one. So there's potential contaminants. The good thing about that is that what well, looks real bad on paper, that's actually one of the main functions of like estuaries and salt marshes and stuff is that they soak up all the bad shit. And like they tend to filter it that like oyster, that's where oysters live and stuff. So it's probably a, the best possible place for it to have occurred just environmentally wise. Because that's where you got the buffer stone to deal with it. I'm going to go clean these pens. And... Oh yeah, the main issue is that there's a giant capsized boat off the coast. And so that's going to be bad for like tourism and stuff. But so anyway, I'm going to go clean these pens. I'll be back. And we're going to do a different article because this article was really short. Okay, be back soon.
hello, hello, hello. Let me see if I can move. There we are. Better. Ta-da, okay, we fixed it. Okay. So, we're gonna be, I need a better towel for this. My lonely little Kim wipe does its job pretty well for wiping off ink and therefore not getting lint or fibers into the nib because it's a Kim wipe. bit dicey I'm probably gonna have to break out the syringe because I've got a little over a mil left that is enough for me to do a review but filling is gonna be real dicey with it We're going to do this one first because this one doesn't take as kindly to filling from a syringe. There we are. Just enough. And then we're actually... Normally I do this one, this one, this one because it goes in decreasing order of nib size. But I can already tell right away that this is not going to be enough to do that. So actually this one behaves better when I fill it from a syringe versus this one. It's something like the feed is just better. And this is the ink that's basically just like straight up gold particles. It's like, sure, okay, you have gold and gold ink. Hey, look at that. I was able to fill it. That was surprising. I was not expecting that. I was definitely expecting syringe. That was a shocker. Got it. So, little secret. I don't really get the hype behind Golden Sands. I've clearly used it before. That's why it's less than a milliliter. And I remember not being impressed by it. I know a lot of people really like it. But you know, hey, that's different inks for different people. And it's been a long time since I've actually tried it. So we'll see. Maybe I like it a lot again this time. Art and holiday stuff, that makes sense. I don't really, I tried doing an ink wash with my Pokemon, with my Poke Fusion. It just don't work for me. Holiday stuff, I just use Regimatite for my holiday stuff. It's an all, all in one ink. You got the red ink with the green sheen, sheen and gold sparkle. Done. Okay. Well, like I said, it's been a couple years since I've used it and ink tastes change. So maybe I'll love it now. Um, oh, right. I was going to switch articles when it came to the boat. We're going to do about construction. Because construction is always great. It's also a construction on a part of road that I drive on fairly frequently. Because a lot of my clients either live close to this part of town or I have to drive through this part of town to get to them.
which is why there's construction happening because it's the part of town where people don't want to expand Marta because oh no crime yeah and so therefore the traffic's really bad so they're doing highway expansion I can't tell if this is dry, clogging, or just light enough, as is the case with a lot of yellows, that I feel like I need to press down more. That's the other thing when I'm not is I clearly use pretty much exclusively nibs on the fine end of the spectrum. The exceptions being like a flex nib. So this might be an ink that really shines in like broads and stuff. So, you know, again, different inks for different people. Okay, speaking of holiday inks, and I know it's September, I'm normally one that like hates talking about Christmas before Halloween. The exception being, I tend to make and craft most of my gifts. So I, because I, I, because I make them, I need this lead time. So this is about, I'm actually a little bit behind. I should have started thinking about like holiday gifts and stuff, like started plotting in August. Because I like, I often will make sweaters for my dad for Christmas. That takes a couple months. <laughs> and so, like, I'm just thinking about that. But now thinking of this, this has, Becky, you mentioned holidays. Last year, I was too late to order, but I really want, so Skylab Letterpress, um, that's Anna's husband, well-appointed, for anyone watching, well-appointed desk, her husband runs a lot of press, and they have these really cute Christmas cards that have dinosaurs, so T-Rexes, with, like, like, reindeer antlers and a Rudolph nose on them. And I want to get them, I wanted to get them last year, but I both did not have the funds, and I thought about it too late for shipping for client holiday cards. It's just enough holiday to be like, yeah, I'm pretty much nominally Christian, but I'm not like religiously Christian. Just to be like, hey, nice gesture. Here's some secular Christmas cards that have a dinosaur. Dinosaurs are pretty, are pretty secular. See, but like, I'm pretty sure this isn't clogged or anything. It just feels very dry and it's very light. It is not doing it for me. Maybe it'll do it for me in like the wet pen. Yellows, that's how, often how they go, especially this shade of like slightly more amber yellow. That's also the thing is I tend to like the slightly orangier yellows versus the amber yellows when it comes to ink. I'll wear this color all day. But like for an ink, I'm like, eh. But I understand that, that a lot of people do like this shade. So that's just, that just comes down to ink preference differences. Like a lot of people prefer greens that are a little bit, in my eyes, a little bit leaning more blue. Like the typical green, which is Diamond Magical Forest, is too blue for me. I prefer greens that have this are slightly more on the yellow spectrum. And so 
like something that to me looks like a true green people will be like that looks like it has a lot of yellow in it because like our preferences tend to dictate what's a true of that shade of color <laughs> unless you've like been formally trained with art school because then you know that <laughs> but yeah so this might just be a like yeah differences in ink color preferences Oh no. I know this exact part of like this exact spot they're talking about this article. It is already a traffic clusterfuck with a lot of suburban sprawl type stuff and bonkers traffic patterns. And they want to add a new hotel like retail complex to it. Which is only gonna make it worse. It'll made me it'll make me avoid that area, that exit, that specific exit even more. And the reason is just that it's like impo like the traffic is so bad once you get off of the exit. Like you're just stuck. You can't, like, if you need to turn left immediately out of the exit, which a lot of people do, it's, like, impossible. Because you have to cross four lanes in a less, in, like, less than 100 meters to turn left off the highway. <laughs> or, like, not, like, once you exit and then you're on the regular road, but the regular road is also four lanes. It's stupid. Aqua. Aqua, are you coming? Aqua's joining us. We have an Aqua. Hi. She's gonna burn out your eardrums right now. I apologize. I'm seeing if she just stays on my shoulder. Sometimes she does, but usually when I'm writing, she's like, oh, hey, I want to chew whatever you're writing with. So we'll see. That's why she often goes away, like in her cage when I'm doing these things, because she's like incapable of just like chilling. I actually know the exact hill they're talking about here. No, this is a bad idea. This is a clusterfuck.
So this is much better in the wet pen, which is what I suspected. Like here, you, this one is one where it's just like, oh yeah, you can really tell the difference between all the different flows. It's very, like, it's almost illegible in this one. It actually contrasts much better on the camera than it is in real life. And then here it's fine. Here it's really pretty. Yes, Akiwa. Do you have opinions? Or do you just want to be loud? Okay. I just dropped the rodeo on the floor. This is fine. Aqua, where are you going? She's now acting like she wants to chew what I was writing with. She was doing so good. She's like, no, I must chew. It is very important. You're clearly giving more attention to whatever you're writing with, not myself. So therefore that is a problem that I must amend by inserting myself into the situation that you're giving attention. Yes, Ak was very cute. Ak, where are you going? of offices. Really? This is what she's doing. <laughs> it's making it hard to write. Go on my head. This is what's happening right now.
She's being obnoxious, as she's wont to do. Like I said, she wants all the attention. I'm not giving her all the attention, therefore she must insert herself between the thing that's taking my attention and me. It's very important. I'm going to go put her in her cage. I'll be back shortly. Okay. Aqua's in her cage. I love her. I wish she could join the stream more often. Just like sitting on my shoulder or something. But when she decides to like, I'm going to now chew the paper. It's not going to work too well. <laughs> or like chew your hand or try and lick the nib. It's just, yeah. Yeah, Rebel, it's a lot. The sink is a lot better in a wet pen, and I definitely did not try it in a wet pen the last time I tried it. I tried it in this pen, the Waterman Hemisphere, because that is, at least, like, until I started doing these reviews, that was my standard test sparkle inks pen, because it handled them really well. And I'm meh on it in the sparkle ink pen, in the, in the Waterman, so... Okay. So the shimmer in this is really aggressive and it's gorgeous in the wet pen. Like, that is super pretty. It's just like, mmm. I can see now why you were like, yeah, for holiday stuff, in a wet pen or like something calligraphy dip nib, this. Huh. Isn't that, doesn't Mike have a sample of that? 
Or like a bottle of that. Like Micro Audrey has a bottle of that. Maybe I'll ask him for a sample. Or, you know, Mike probably has this sink too. I'll ask him for a sample and... Um, or we can just ask him tomorrow for a comparison in the Friday live stream. Let's do that first. <laughs> Rather than him mailing me a sample. Though I'd be interested in a sample. Yeah, Shanghai sounds like it's basically like Sailor Apricot or the Jacarbon Orange Soleil. Um, but with gold shimmer, which sounds bloody gorgeous. Actually, that's probably very similar to Diamond Inferno Orange, which I did a couple weeks ago. Let me look at the swabs for that. Oh, I realized I never did the swab for Diamond Golden Sands. So I'll show that now. It's going to make it a bugger to timestamp. Okay, there we are. We should be back. Okay. So you have Diamond Golden Sands. And yeah, I think when I swabbed is the first time I was like, oh, I understand why people like this now. Okay. And I don't know if it died while I was doing the Inferno Orange comparison. So let's do that again. So Inferno Orange right by Edelstein Mandarin or Nemesine Solar Storm 1869. It, but like... Like what you're describing for Shanghai sounds like, cause I've kind of paid attention. I was like, but when Mike's done that, I'm like, I already have so many orange inks. I don't need more, but like Sailor Apricot, but with sparkle, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, Sailor Apricot's one that I got the full bottle cause I saw a swab and I was like, whoa. And then I actually inked it up and I was like, this is very similar to almost all the other orange inks I have, except it's more yellow. So it's less legible. Okay, this might have been a mistake. It looks real great in a swab though. It really does. But like, I prefer actually writing with something like Diamond Pumpkin. I need that legibility. Or even Krishna Palaza. And like Fire on Fire is right there, real close, but it has a, it's slightly darker. So it's slightly more legible. Anyway, we need to do shitty paper for the diamond golden sands and we'll be done here because i'm a political junkie so therefore i'm gonna be watching the debate tonight torturing myself with all three fucking hours of it like i'm gonna be snark i'm gonna watch it or like listen to it and then i'm gonna be snarkily tweeting about the whole thing but like i said i'm a political junkie it's what i do i also view it as like a duty to be informed about things did this in 2016 with like if there were GOP debates, I would have done it with the GO I would do it with the GOP debates. It's just that's my thing. But anyway, so let's get through this. Diam. So I have time to make some food before the debates start. That's probably a better move, quite honestly. I was gonna say that is a long name. <laughs> I am just gonna go according. Like people call me online Bijou because it's like, I don't know. Nice handle though.
So yeah, we're almost done here. I don't even remember where I was in the article. Oh, we're talking about, oh yes, this terrible hotel. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna dare you to, like, I believe you, but like, yeah. Where was I in the article that I was copying? This is always what happens every time when I do the Rodia, because I don't actually like copy anything for the Rodia, just write names. There we are. I clearly, my little chat window does not like this. I don't know what bot command you were trying to do there, according, but it clearly did not work. Oh, okay, yes. I don't actually have a Discord server, um, but I am a member of a couple of Discord servers for fountain pens. So I can throw those links up for you real quick. If one of them's kind of dead, but the other one I can definitely give you a link for. Um... There we go. Ta-da. That is the active fountain pen server that I am in. Actually, I'm in two that are kind of dead. One's very dead and the other one is dying slowly. But that one that I just linked is very active. Yay for Penposium. Rebel there, Rebwizzles is actually a mod there. So yes, all, all fun and good. Actually, hmm. Why am I writing steel here? I don't know. It's towards the end of the stream, so I'm getting like, ah. <laughs> um, let's see. Crown Plaza, there we are. I can like, just all of a sudden my brain is like, you are done. Wow, just spelling. Even though I'm like copying it, my brain is just like not processing the word. So far this actually looks really good on crap paper, so I'm not surprised. Oh, I should do the pen capping. Such a good snap every time. 
I've owned this pen for like four years. I love the snap. Actually, at first I hated it because I would try and cap it during meetings and it would be obnoxious, but now I love it. <laughs> And this ink is actually doing pretty well, like feathering wise on this crap paper. So that's another reason why people probably like it a lot. Cause it looks fabulous there. Yes. I identify as asexual, so that is the A in the LGBTQIA plus acronym. Excellent! Halo arrow ace non-binary. Just curious then, I'm, I always just default to they, them pro de pronouns, but I'm assuming they, them, unless you use one of like the German ones. <laughs> Many of them. Okay, cool. A lot of my non-binary friends really do care so that's why I always ask. Welcome, welcome. We are friendly. We are queer friendly. Just writing some ink reviews. Actually, we're pretty much done. I usually go about two hours. And I started at 5.30 and this is the last page. So we're gonna see how this looks when I flip it over. Like I said, it looks really good on the front end. It's very sparkly and not feathery. Again, I'm understanding why this thing is so popular. Oh boy. So bleeding's okay. It's not nearly as bad as Brandy Dazzle. Brandy Dazzle was an experience with bleeding. I was pretty okay with these two. It actually, I wanna say looks better. I'm actually liking how it looks better. This is not uncommon with yellow. Um, I, it tends to look good on shitty paper. I don't know why. I haven't heard an omnisexual yet, but ever since like Tumblr died, I haven't been as in those like circles, seeing those across my feed. So yeah. But I would say for shitty paper, this is an acceptable amount of bleeding and ghosting, at least with the, the dry and regular writer. And it still looks really good on the front end. For the wet writer, it's a very rare ink that doesn't do this in the wet writer. And when it does, I'm like, holy shit. Or like when something doesn't bleed through like that, like what was it? Um, platinum, um, platinum lavender black was really good. Like it didn't have like hardly any bleed through in the wet pen. And I was amazed. Oh, you're in a BRB, but I'm actually about done. So I, this might be over by the time you get back. Okay, so I'm gonna empty these. Put everything over to the side. Okay. Okay, cool. I was gonna say, you said BRB and I'm like, I'm about to end the stream. <laughs> picked a 
Like, I know that happens. That's happened to me plenty of times where it's like, oh, hi, you just joined. I'm about to end. <laughs> so, yeah. This one looks really cool in the vials as well. Where it's just like, all, gl all glitter inks do. It's just like, ooh, look at the swirly goldy liquid. But yeah, so thank you for joining me. Um, I'll be here next week on Thursday. Around the same time, 5, 5.30 p.m. Really, 5.30. <laughs> Okay. I was like, wait a minute. You said I'm back and I didn't even look at the name and I was like, wait a minute, other account. So cool. Um, yeah. So thank you for joining me. I'm actually ending the stream now. I'm, I've got my ink reviews done. I still got to clean these pens, but don't do that on stream. Um, yeah, I'm here every Thursday, unless like something comes up, in which case I put it in like the info, either up there or down there. So yeah. And yeah, have a good evening and I'll see you next week. Bye.